right, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Um, if we can just uh, take our seats really in a bit. All right, so as I, we've told the entire, uh, everyone else, so we want to welcome you to our 2024, our third annual Teen Summit. As you all uh, take a seat, please know that there is a QR code um, inside of your folders, and we ask that you take out your cell phone uh, and take that pre-session survey. Once everybody's seated, I will get started uh, in just a moment. All right then, thank you. Got everybody? All right, so I just wanna welcome you to our, our team summit today. As I said before, it's our third annual summit. Uh, this is in collaboration with uh, the CMSD, our Responsible Sexual Behavior Program, uh, with Sharon Stevens and Nomi, uh, and in the Cleveland Department of Public Health, uh, our Division of Nursing. So again, we just wanna welcome you. We're gonna get started with some staff introductions. So first and foremost, um, is Sharon around? Do I see her? Yeah, so if you can <laughs> To my right, uh, this is Sharon Stevens from the Responsible Sexual Behavior Program. Uh, Jeannie, if you can stand up and wave. This is our Director of Nursing, uh, the brainchild behind all of this. Uh, <laughs> Jeannie, uh, Nomi, is she around? No, no, all right then. All right, so we're just gonna get started with some housekeeping items. Uh, we're going to go over the purpose and objectives of the Teen Summit, uh, review of today's schedule and the specific room locations. It's important to remember that uh, the students, you all will remain in each room while the presenters rotate. And we will have lunch uh, at around 12.30 and that will be during our final session. And as I mentioned before, we have a pre and post survey. Uh, if you haven't already, um, please take out your phones click on that QR code and take our pre-session survey. And then finally, I'm gonna go over uh, the state of teen health in Cleveland. So why are we here? Um, the purpose of this teen summit is really to provide awareness and education um, about the importance of adolescent reproductive health in a fun, interactive way. We really want you guys to have fun today and to really enjoy yourselves. Um, we want to equip you with the tools you need to protect yourself from unwanted pregnancies, STIs, and unhealthy relationships. Can you guys see? I don't know what happened. So our objectives are, we want you to uh, develop an understanding of the various services provided by our CDPH Teen Wellness Clinic. Uh, we have clinics both on the east side and on the west side. Uh, we have a clinic at uh, J. Glenn, which is on St. Clair, and we also have a uh, reproductive health clinic that is on Lorraine at our McCafferty Health Center. And we have a mobile unit um, that will be out and about in a little bit. So our objectives are including to explore safe and effective affordable contraceptive methods. Um, you're gonna learn about various STIs today, their symptoms, uh, treatment, and prevention. Um, and you're going to also gain some insight into the importance of building a healthy relationship and how to identify a completely unhealthy one. So just to go over our room assignments, so group A is going to be in room 221. You're going to have ushers after, at, after both presentations um, to lead you up to room 221, and that's Cleveland School of Science and Medicine and John Adams. Group B, uh, the blue group, is MC Squared STEM School, and group C, uh, is room 20, 224, and that is JFK. And again, just a brief overview of today's schedule. Um, you'll see that you'll each remain in your rooms and the speakers will rotate. So we're gonna cover three very important topics, uh, STIs, LGBTQ health, and contraception. And in the third session, you'll have lunch. All right, for those who have not, has everybody taken their pre-session survey? Yes, you raise your hand if you've taken it. All right. For those who need to, you can go right on ahead. So now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the 
sexual risk behaviors among Cleveland teens. Because you may be wondering, you know, why are we here? Like, why are we doing this? So I'm just going to give you a little background information on currently what is going on with Cleveland teens here um, in our city. So 36% of the youth risk behavioral uh, survey, high school respondents, have noted that they have had sexual intercourse. And 23% of teens are sexually active. And when we say sexually active, that means they've had sex within the past three months of taking this survey. It's important to note that 54% of those students who, uh, teens who were sexually active, did not have to use a condom during their last uh, intercourse. And 20% didn't use any method to prevent pregnancy. Another reason why we're here, um, almost 90% of all teens have never been tested for an STI. Um, for example, you know, we have 22% of ninth graders that have reported having sex, um, but only nine, but 95%, almost the majority, have never been tested for a sexually transmitted infection. And it's important to note that we do have some, some good data uh, to point out in the fact that, you know, teen births have decreased almost every year uh, since 2017, which is a good thing. But in contrast, chlamydia diagnosis, and don't worry, you will learn all about what that is uh, in a little bit, um, among 14 to 19 year olds have increased since uh, 2020. And this is startling because overall for the general population of all ages, those number of chlamydia diagnoses have been decreasing. But for, for teens, they actually are on the uptick. So we definitely want to talk about ways that you guys can protect yourselves um, and prevent from being infected. Uh, it's good to know that also, and according with all ages, uh, the gonorrhea diagnosis among Cleveland teens are, are decreasing along with the general population. So that's good. And syphilis diagnosis, um, among Cleveland teens, so they, it, they had a spike in 2021, um, and then they proceeded to drop. So why is this alarming? Because we usually do not see, uh, syphilis is not very common among healthy teens, um, but it's important to know, and as you've probably seen on the news, the cases of syphilis in all ages is rising. All right, so just a little bit of data. We have about 29,000 teens uh, here in Cleveland. Uh, in terms of cases, this is about 1,300 cases of chlamydia, uh, 400 cases of gonorrhea, um, syphilis, 15 cases, less than five cases of HIV, and 335 teen births. Um, and for those who are interested, uh, each of those are the microscopic pictures of the actual virus or bacterium uh, that causes the infections. So chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, and then the vi HIV virus. All right, so now we're gonna get into our, uh, what a visit to our teen wellness clinic would be like. Taking care of your health is not just important, it's crucial, and that includes reproductive health. We want to talk about a friendly and confidential place where anyone age 13 or over can come get checked out without parental consent or notification. Plus, we'll dive into the various contraceptive services available for both young women and men and all gender identities. So sit back, relax, and let's get informed. What our health centers have to offer the teen um, population is we offer teen um, relevant services. We offer reproductive health services, family planning, um, STI, sexually transmitted infection screenings and um, treatment. We do a lot of counseling um, to the teen. We talk about health relationships and pregnancy testing. Um, so those are like the primary services that we offer for our teen population. First things first, we understand the importance of privacy when it comes to your health. That's why our services are super discreet, friendly, and always respectful. We don't call out your name. Instead, we assign you a number, and everyone is protected by HIPAA laws, meaning we can't disclose anything concerning your health without your consent. Just bring your ID 
or your health insurance card if you have one, we've got you covered. Our clinic offers people the ability to walk in. They do not have to, it's not contingent on if they uh, can pay for their services. It's based on what they need. Um, if they do have insurance, by all means, we will bill. We're there to make sure that they get what they need. Now, let's zero in on reproductive health. We're talking everything from sexually transmitted infections or STIs to pregnancy and contraception. Knowledge is power, and we want you to be well informed about the options available. It's also counseling, like I mentioned, um, and just seeing what they need. We do we do like a reproductive life plan, and we map that out and. We ask the teens, do you want to have a baby the next year? A lot of teens, you know, will say, not really right now, so what can we do to help you to get to your goal? It's a tangible um, goal-setting device. If teens want to go to on to college or, you know, and they want to have a baby, we got to make that look, how's this going to look? So they kind of can see, you know, um, you know, it doesn't really make sense. For women, we offer a wide range of contraceptive services from long-acting reversible contraceptives and interuterine devices to contraceptive implants and birth control pills, depot shots, and urine-based screening for STIs, HIV tests, and more. We've got a bunch of choices that cater to your preferences and your lifestyle. Fellas, we haven't forgotten about you. Our reproductive health services cover STI symptoms, urine-based screening, HIV tests, and syphilis tests. It's essential to take care of your sexual health, and we're here to make it easy and comfortable for you. Plus, we give you free condoms with each appointment. Treating teens like the young adults that they are is vital. Um, taking your time to listen, and of course not being preoccupied with other tasks. Um, because I, you know, individuals, especially teens, can sense you very quickly, and they've, you know, can make a quick decision about whether you're a person to trust or not in a very short period of time. So you have to make sure that when you are speaking with the teens at the out on the onset of you developing this relationship with them that they know that you can be trusted. At the end of your visit, our caring nurses will deliver your test results gently and quietly. But we don't stop there. We provide a range of essential referrals to available wraparound services. And we're happy to introduce you to our community partner organizations like Metro Health and Neighborhood Family Practice and others. Safe sex is what's up. We can't stress that enough. If you're not prepared to start a family, preventing pregnancy is real simple. There's numerous contraceptive methods available. Just select one that best suits you. Please, prioritize your safety and protect your future. It's just being, you know, if you are going to engage in sex, just to be responsible. And, you know, know your status, get, get yourself tested if you have a new partner, just to, you know, so you're not spreading, um, you know, spreading the disease around. Remember, taking control of your reproductive health is a personal journey, and we're here to support you every step of the way. So do not hesitate to visit us, because your well-being matters. Stay informed, stay healthy, and take care of your reproductive health. You get one body, and you're going to have to carry this body and take care of it um, for a very long time. And you are worthy and important enough to take care of. So coming out and getting yourself tested for STIs, screened, um, even coming out to con have these conversations with us is very important and that they're worth it. So just a little introduction to our, our health clinics. Um, right before I close, um, I'm going to actually have our director, uh, Dr. Margolis. Uh, he's the director of public health for the city of Cleveland. He's going to come over and say a few words and introduce himself to you. All right, then. Here we go. I take your lap here too, you do? So, okay. Yeah. So maybe you have to stand next to me. If you want to stand next to me. Just follow me around. No, yeah, you want to do that? Thank you. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right. My name is Dave Margolius. I'm the director of public health for the city of Cleveland. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. No, it means a lot. Uh, your health is really important. You are our future. You are the pride of the city of Cleveland. Some of you are going to leave when you get out of high school, right? 
but then you might come back. You might come back and raise families here or be a part of this community here. So we appreciate you so much. Your health is important. This is a big deal. This is the first of uh, many summits that we're going to do this year. We are here for you. We've got those two clinics. You saw the addresses at uh, Lorraine and West 42nd, West 44th, and St. Clair and East 113th. And you can come into our clinics. You don't have to tell your parents. You can just walk in and we're gonna be there for you, for whatever you need. So we really want you to know that because sometimes to go to some of the bigger hospitals and to go to you know, your mom or your dad's primary care doctor, there are a lot of barriers. You might not have your insurance card, you might not have all that stuff. So just know that we're here for you. And I wanna give a special shout out to the folks in the back. This is the Cleveland Department of Public Health Clinic team. They're hiding way in the back. This is a field trip for them. This is exciting for them, just like it is for you. And it's going to be a great day. There's sunshine in the lobby plant area out there. So enjoy that. And uh, thanks for being here. More to come. All right, back to Naha Ayala Ya Amponsa. Amazing, every time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna hand this right there. So just um, a few closing reminders. Thank you, Mar Dr. Margolis. Um, we would definitely like to thank our CDPA staff. I'm not gonna make you guys stand up and wave, um, but we have Yolanda, we have Jordan, we have Bob, we have Rada, um, Kathy, we have Rosa, we have Jane. Am I getting anybody else? We have Danielle <laughs> uh, and many others that we have here today. Uh, along with our presenters, Kat and Tiffany uh, and Akeem, and then we're gonna have Arneta next. So we all thank you for being here. They were a major part, uh, also Maureen and Jerry, for making this well. So we'd just like to thank them. So after our next uh, presentation, which is gonna be Health Relationships, um, you are going to be guided by your ushers to your specific rooms, and then again, uh, just to remember, Group A is, is in room 221, uh, Group B is in room 212, and Group C is in 224. As I mentioned before, you're going to have lunch during your final session. Um, know that we have in room 223 urine-based screening, so if you're interested in getting a urine-based uh, STI screening, uh, you can head over to room 223 during your break. Um, and then I will also ask that you please remember to complete the post-session survey during session three. All right then, so up next is Arnetta Matthews. Y'all can give her a hand, y'all can give her a hand. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so good morning everyone. Good morning. So my name is Arnetta Matthews. As she mentioned, I am the Director of Education Outreach at the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center. How many people are familiar with the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center or heard of our services? Awesome, awesome. So for those who don't know, the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to support survivors of sexual violence, to promote healing and prevention, and to advocate for social change because we want to see a world free of sexual violence. And I'm gonna talk about why that's so important because there's so many people that are impacted by sexual violence that we don't know of. Because according to statistics, in the United States, one in four girls will experience some form of sexual violence before the age of 18, and one in six boys. That's just how the statistics are, are falling out right now. And so we wanna make sure, that, again, that you know about the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center our services. So I'm gonna talk about healthy relationships because I always say that my job is to one day put myself out of a job. And the way I do that is continue to have conversations around how we build healthy relationships. Because by building healthy relationships, that is a way we can prevent sexual violence from happening. So I love participation. I really prefer this to be a conversation. So I will be asking some questions. And so I'm gonna ask you just to raise your hand when those things come. But the first thing is to respect yourself. Be open-minded. Some of this information that we're gonna talk about may be new to you. So be open-minded to hearing the information. 
Also be mindful of respecting each other because some people have different lived experiences. I'm not asking for people to share their personal experiences here today, but in case people do, I just ask that we maintain confidentiality and not go back and share other people's business, okay? I also ask, again, that we listen to one another. I love to hear from people. I love to hear from students. So again, I'm gonna respect you and I'm gonna ask for respect in return. And so again, just respect the floor, raise your hand, know that I'm what they call a mandated reporter. So sometimes after this class, sometimes people you know, come to me and say, hey, I have questions or they wanna share certain things with me. And so I let people know up front that I'm a mandated reporter. So if you tell me that you're being abused or neglected in some way or harm, I may have to report that to someone. And I just like to let people know up front so they can decide whether they wanna share something with me, okay? All right, is everybody good with these agreements? Are we okay with this? Thumbs up if you're good with this. We good with these agreements? Okay, cool. So again, because I work for the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, I'm gonna be talking about some things that may be sensitive in nature, okay? I'm gonna talk about some things that are uncomfortable because I have to talk about sexual violence because we're trying to prevent it, right? And so I understand if this topic and this conversation is overwhelming for you and you need to step out, that's okay, right? It's okay to step out, it's okay to take a break. I understand that. This is sensitive concept. So the first thing we're gonna do is discuss the elements of sexual violence, what that means. Then we're gonna talk about the difference between a healthy versus an unhealthy relationship. And then we're gonna talk about tools to seek help for yourself or someone else who may be in need. And so I provided our hotline cards, which I'll talk about a little bit later on, but our hotline is anonymous. It's open 24 seven. You can call, you can text, or you can chat with someone if you're in ever in need of any kind of support related to sexual violence. So again, the reason why I'm here it's because sexual violence is something that is very prevalent in our society. So, in the United States, every 68 seconds, someone experiences a sexual assault, okay? So take a moment to just grapple with that. In the United States, every 68 seconds, someone experiences some form of sexual violence, okay? And so that's why, in the, in the time we're talking for about 30 minutes, they say roughly at least 30 people may be impacted in some way by sexual violence, okay? So, Let's think about what is sexual violence. So when you're thinking about the term sexual violence, what comes to mind? Anybody have an idea? Rape, right? That's the word that always comes to people's mind when they think about sexual violence. So I'm gonna expound that in a little bit. So sexual violence does include rape, right? But sexual violence is an umbrella term. An umbrella term meaning there's a lot of things that fall under the category of sexual violence. So sexual violence is any sexual contact or behavior that happens without your consent, or you can say the word permission, okay? So sexual violence is any sexual contact or behavior that happens without your consent or permission, and or with someone who has authority over you. So sometimes sexual violence happens just because you're dealing with the person who has some type of power or authority over you, and so that's what makes the situation wrong, okay? Can someone give me an example of who could be like an authority figure? What's an example, yes. Say it one more time. A teacher, yeah, a teacher, coach, yes. Principal, employers, right? All of those are people of authority, right? And so sometimes sexual violence is seen as such because you're dealing or having some kind of sexual interaction with someone who has authority. So under the category of sexual violence, there's things like sexual harassment, right? So that's like the unwanted comments, the cat calling, the trying to get someone involved in some type of sexual activity and they're like not feeling it, they're not liking that happening, that's sexual harassment, right? There's things like sexting. So we know that sometimes people are sending new pictures to one another, right? They're sending those, right? And you may consent to do that. Now, shouldn't really be happening because everybody here for the most part is under the age of 18. And so if you're under the age of 18, that's distributing child pornography, but we know those things are still happening, right? So people are sending these nudes, right? And so you may consent to send that to someone you like, right? But then let's say y'all stop talking, you break up, and then they share that picture with other people, right? A couple weeks ago, we saw an incident with Drake. I don't know if people heard about it, but pictures of him was floating around the internet, right? And it was super embarrassing, I'm sure, for him because, again, a photo that he shared private, probably privately to someone is now floating around the internet, right? And that's sexual violence as well because, again, you may send that photo, and so you take a risk. When you send a new photo to someone, you don't know what that person may do with that photo. So, again, you have to be mindful of that when you're sharing those kind of content, okay? So that's the falling under the category of sexual violence. 
Then there's voyeurism, like the peeping toms, the people who are watching people getting undressed. We've heard of terms like upskirting, where someone is looking under people's skirts and taking videos and pictures and distributing it. Then there's things like indecent exposure, where someone is flashing other people, right? Exposing themselves. You may be on like public transportation, right? Just sitting there on a bus and someone exposing themselves. You don't want to see that, right? That makes you feel uncomfortable. That is also a form of sexual violence. So I want you to take away that when we're talking about things like sexual violence, I'm not just talking about a physical act of rape. I'm talking about all these different things that fall under the category, okay? Any questions? Okay, so I'm gonna highlight two things in our community that we're hearing about that's pretty prevalent, okay? So one thing is sextortion. Anybody ever heard of the term sextortion? Anybody heard of the term sextortion? Just a few, okay, well that's good because that's why I'm here, right, to inform you about that. So sextortion is something that we're hearing where sometimes people may have sent a photo again to someone, someone they think is someone they know, right? But that person may be a stranger. Sometimes it has been seen to be a person in another foreign country who was posing as a youth to try to get that person's attention, that favor, and over time they kind of coerce them or they get them to send that photo, and then once they have that photo, then they try to extort them. They say, okay, if you won't want me to release this photo, you have to send me some money, or you have to continue to send me new photos. And I experienced this working with a young person a few years ago before it became really prevalent who thought they were talking to another peer, thought they were talking to another youth, and wound up to be someone in a foreign country. They were afraid to tell their parents, because they were like, I shouldn't even send that photo, I'm gonna get in trouble for that. But I was able to talk to them about talking to their parents about that because, again, we wanted to make sure they had the support they needed and make sure that law enforcement knew what was going on so that this doesn't continue to happen, okay? But sextortion is something that we're hearing about in our community. About a year ago, there was a young man who was in Streetsboro who experienced sextortion, and unfortunately took his life because he felt so pressured by sextortion, he didn't know what to do, he didn't know how to turn to his parents, and so he took his life. And I would hate that to happen to any of you, so again, just be aware that when we're sending new photos to people, we just don't know their intentions sometimes. Then there's also a thing like grooming, right? So when we're talking about building healthy relationships, we gotta also understand that there may be, unfortunately, some unhealthy interactions with people of authority, right? So grooming is a word to describe people trying to take advantage of someone for sexual purposes. But it starts off with someone maybe saying, hey, I care about you, right? I think that we have a special relationship. I see you as being really mature, and I wanna have this private conversations and con private interactions with you because I think you're special. Or I could help you get into this special program if you kind of gave me your trust and we can meet one-on-one. -on -one. And it starts off really innocently, but over time, that person or that predator may start to try to engage that person in some type of sexual interaction, right? But it starts off sometimes very innocently. So it's so important that when you get that icky feeling, when you're dealing with an adult or a person of authority, that you key into that and you ask for support, right? Because again, I would hate for anyone to be in a situation where they're dealing with something like grooming and they don't know where to turn. So, I said all that to say that a lot of times when people think about things like sexual violence, they always think it's gonna be a, a stranger in a dark alley, right? I don't know, how many of you learned about stranger danger growing up? How many people learned about stranger danger growing up? Me too, right? Yes. We do need to be mindful of the strangers in our lives. We need to pay attention to those things, right, in our community. But, more than 80% of people who are impacted by sexual violence, they know that perpetrator. Okay? More than 80% of people who are impacted by things like sexual violence, they know that perpetrator. It's not going to be a stranger. It's not going to be someone in a dark alley all the time. It may be someone you know, someone you love, and someone you trust. So it's so important that we're mindful of all the relationships in our lives and making sure they're healthy. So let's talk about what is an unhealthy relationship. What's an unhealthy relationship? Give me some characteristics of an unhealthy relationship. Anybody? Yes. Coerce. Yes, yeah, so a lot of dependence. So coercion is when you're trying to use threats or intimidation to get someone in a relationship, right? What else? What else are the signs of an unhealthy relationship? Yeah. Yes, isolation, absolutely. Yep, anything else? So to summarize, an unhealthy relationship is where people feel unequal, 
they feel unsafe, and they feel unsupported, okay? In our relationships, we should feel like we're equal. Like our lives and our values matter, right? Not one person is more important than the other. We need to feel safe. We need to feel physically safe and emotionally safe. So if we're in a relationship and someone has harmed us in some way, if we can't let them know that they harmed us in some way, then that is a sign of an unhealthy relationship because we can't be vulnerable and authentic if we're harmed. Then we also need to feel supported, right? We gotta know that the people in our lives got our back. They care about us, they want us to thrive. And if we don't feel like the people in our lives are supportive of us, then that is also, again, the sign of an unhealthy relationship. So when we think about unhealthy relationships, the word abuse comes up, okay? So many of y'all, you'll know about mental abuse, I mean, I'm sorry, you know about physical, sexual, and verbal abuse, but some people forget about things like mental abuse. So mental abuse is when you're trying to change the way a person thinks. So that could be like gaslighting. That could mean, you know, wearing a person's self-esteem down, right? So that, again, they question their judgment. Then there's things like emotional abuse, when you're trying to change the way a person feels. So that may include uh, telling a person, hey, if you love me, you'll do certain things, things that could be harmful to them. Or because I, got, I love you, I need to know where you are 24-7. You need to make sure I have your location. You need to answer my text right away or it's gonna be a problem. Or there's things like emotional abuse where someone says, hey, if you leave me, if we end this relationship, then I may hurt myself, right? Because I can't live without you. All of those change the way a person feels. Then there's things like social abuse, like the isolation, right? Keeping people away from their friends and their loved ones, right? Maybe telling someone, hey, you can't trust nobody else. I'm the only one who cares about you. And so that person starts to become dependent solely on that perpetrator and not caring about the other supports. Then there's things like spiritual abuse, where someone uses a person's faith or belief system to control them in some way. Then financial abuse is where, just like that sextortion or, or someone who may feel like they have all the money and resources in the, in the relationship feel like they get to make all the decisions and they have all the power over the other person. And so these, again, are just different tactics that a person may use in an unhealthy relationship. And so in the team power and control wheel that you see, there's a lot of other things that people can use, right? Um, limit, limiting people's independence, stopping them from talking to their friends. Um, violating their privacy, going through their phone, going through their personal items without their permission, checking behind them without their permission, using social status. So they may start to say things like, hey, you should be lucky to be with a person like me. I could be with somebody else, right? And so that person starts to feel like, okay, well maybe I need to step up my game so that I can prove that I'm worthy to be with that person, right? That they're wearing on that person's self-esteem. And so when we think about things like sexual violence and unhealthy relationships, it's really about power and control. So there's a lot of tactics that an abuser may use to keep someone in an unhealthy relationship using some of these tactics. So I'm gonna show a video that's gonna show some examples of people who are in very unhealthy relationships. Because I love you, I want to be your only guy. Because I love you, skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you, I just want to be with you so freaking much. Because I love you. I waited for you after chem lab. You were walking with Mark? Because I love you. You shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. You should know how dumb that makes me look. I don't care if she's your lab partner. Why do you have texts from him? Because I love you. This number? Delete. Because I love you. This Jason number? Delete. And, and Ben? Delete. Because I love you, I should smash your phone. I'll let you give me your password instead. Because I love you. I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's okay. Because I love you. Y you understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love. Okay. So, what are some of the things you heard that lets you know these people are in very unhealthy relationships? Like anything that stood out? Yes. Don't talk to your classmates, right? Going through people's phones. Yep. Anything else? Things that stood out? Yes. You should be lucky, right, to be with me. Right? The smashing the phone always gets to me, right? If someone threatens to smash the phone, it's going to be a problem. But unfortunately, some abusers, destroy people's phones because they know that's the access they have to other people, right? And so that's the way to control them. So again, when we hear things like that, that's not love. Sometimes these things become normalized on TikTok and social media. We think these things are okay, but this is not okay, right? Abuse is not normal. 
So sometimes people wonder, how do people end up in these very unhealthy relationships and why they may stay for a long time, right? So it's called the cycle of abuse. So when we're starting off dating someone in the green stage, things are great, right? We may start to talk about our likes, right? We start to, again, be in this honeymoon stage and we're just getting to know one another and things may be awesome, right? But over time, things may progress to the yellow stage where someone starts to be harmful towards the other person, right? They might start to put them down. They may start to nitpick them. They may start to question who they're talking to, which makes the person who is being abused start to question themselves like, okay, Things were really great in the beginning. I don't know what's going on, but I'm not happy anymore, right? And so they may say, okay, I'm gonna give that person a chance. I'm gonna hang in there, they're going through something. And so again, they may stay in that unhealthy relationship. So you see, denial is in the middle of it, right? So because a person may be denying how they truly feel, they may stay in that very harmful relationship because they're hoping that things get back to the green stage. But unfortunately, in a very abusive relationship, things may start to escalate to the red stage where something happens, right? Something physically happens, sexually, verbally, something that is traumatic. And so that person who has been harmed has to think about, okay, am I gonna stay in this relationship? Am I gonna give it a chance? right? And so maybe because they hope to get back to that green stage, they hope that that was really who that person was who harmed them, they're going to give them a chance and they may end up back into the cycle of abuse. So according to research, it could take a person up to seven times to leave this cycle of abuse because they may go through this over and over again. Again, because of denial, they hoping that things get better. And I would hate for any of you to have to go through that. How many people here have jobs? How many people have different jobs? Anybody got a job? Right? How many people are involved in some type of extracurricular activity? They're involved in like sports, athletics, some kind of programs. Right? You have a lot of responsibilities. And so when you're in an unhealthy relationship, sometimes it may be difficult for you to take care of your responsibilities because you're so stressed out being in that relationship. And none of you, again, deserve to be in an unhealthy relationship. You deserve to have healthy relationships. So what is a healthy relationship? A healthy relationship is where people feel equal, they feel safe, and they feel supported. And so we also have these other foundations, right? We have personal freedom. We should be able to take care of our responsibilities without feeling like we gotta be trapped in a relationship, right? We should have consent and boundaries. We have to be able to talk about the things that we're comfortable with and uncomfortable with. And if we don't feel like we can have those conversations, then guess what? That is a sign of an unhealthy relationship because if you can't be authentic with the person that you're dealing with, that you don't like certain things, then again, that's a red flag. Then mutual support. We gotta know that the people, again, care about us. They have our best interests at heart. We have open and honest communication, right? Sometimes communication can be tough. Sometimes we grew up in situations where we thought that there were certain ways you communicate about things, and then we learn over time that that wasn't the way, right? Maybe yelling and screaming, name calling and blaming, that's not the way to go. Then we need safety and trust in our relationship. And again, respect and equality is essential in a healthy relationship. So we know there's a lot of benefits to healthy relationships, right? Healthy relationships help prevent our mental health from being negatively impacted. It's allowing us to be able to focus on our grades and our responsibilities. Uh, it decreases the likelihood of alcohol or drug use because sometimes when people are stressed in their relationships, they turn to alcohol and drugs for comfort. Uh, it decreases the likelihood of suicide, abuse, and unplanned parenthood because today we're talking about things that, again, we want to be healthy, we want to be safe. And in healthy relationships, if we can't talk about the use of contraceptions, even if we want to engage in some type of sexual activity, if we can't have those open and honest conversations, then that is a problem, right? And that is an unfortunate result of an unhealthy relationship. So now that we've talked about what is healthy and versus unhealthy, right, it's important to know that you have to access support. Sometimes people don't want to access support because they're ashamed of what they're going through. Maybe they don't want to get the other person in trouble, right? But it's so important that you go to a support a person, particularly an adult, if you find yourself in an unhealthy relationship. Because I know sometimes you want to go to your friends, right? Because you may feel like your friends understand you, um, they know what you're dealing with, right? And so you don't want an adult to know what's going on. But I'm gonna encourage you to think about some safe adults that you can turn to because they just might have more resources that you're not aware of, right? And sometimes it's a safety risk. An adult may need to step in because it's a safety issue, okay? So, how many people in here feel like they have a safe adult they can turn to if they are in an unhealthy relationship? How many people feel like they got someone they can turn to? At least one. Well, I hope everybody does, right? And if you don't, again, I mentioned the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center as a resource to turn to, right? If you're in need of support, because we all need someone we can lean on. So make a move, speak up. If you find yourself in an unhealthy relationship, please make a move to speak up. Now, I mentioned some reasons why people don't speak up if they need support. What are some other reasons you can think of of why people don't ask for help? What are some things that stop people from asking for help? Anybody? 
You, they don't trust anybody? Yep, maybe they've been hurt, right? Some trauma, absolutely. What are some other reasons? Yes. Yeah, they may not think it's that big a deal, right? They may not recognize they're in an unhealthy relationship. So, again, make a move and speak up. If you feel like you need support, please ask for it. You deserve it. You deserve to be in a healthy relationship. Also, if you recognize from this conversation that maybe some of your behaviors have been unhealthy, it's important to seek help for that too, right? So sometimes until we know better, we don't do better, right? But when we know better, we hopefully will do better. But again, awareness is important. Now you understand the signs of an unhealthy relationship, so hopefully you're gonna be able to display healthy relationships going forward. So, again, I mentioned our, our 24 hour hotline. You can call, you can text or chat with someone if you're in need, right? Um, it's anonymous, so we won't know who you are unless you share that information. You can follow us on Instagram to find out what we're doing in the community. This year we don't have U360, but we hope in the future to be able to bring back our U360 program. And that is a program that is our Youth Ambassador Council. And so those individuals, those students across Northeast Ohio come together and they're working towards sexual violence prevention, having conversations about healthy relationships and taking these information that we're talking about today to their peers and spheres of influence. And so we hope that people will think about that in the future. We give gift cards, we write college recommendations. So it's a great program for anyone who is passionate about, again, preventing sexual violence in their communities. Um, also, just wanted to mention that we have an app that people can access, other resources, there's quizzes about am I in a healthy relationship, there's a lot of quotes, a lot of like videos, just a lot of good tools, again, to continue to have this conversation, because 30 minutes is just not enough. And so most importantly, know that we believe you. At the Cleveland Rape Crisis Center, we believe you. A lot of times survivors or people who've been impacted by sexual violence do not come forward because they think that they are not gonna be believed. But we start off by believing individuals who come to our office, right? And so again, know that we're here to support you. I mentioned the statistics as far as the prevalence. So again, there may be people in here who've, in, who've been impacted or who will future be impacted by sexual violence. And it's so important that you know there's resources out there for you, okay? You don't have to deal with those things alone. Are there any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Yep. Oops. Uh, uh, give me a second. You good? Try to time it. Oh. Uh. I hate to do this. Shoot. Particular slide. Is this the slide? Okay, gotcha. Yep, it's a QR code. The people can access our app. It's not something that you have to use up like your Google Play or your download. Like it will be, it's a web-based app. Okay? So you have to use up your data. But I hope this was, how many people feel like this conversation was helpful? How many people feel like this conversation was helpful to you? That's what I love to hear, right? I hope it's helpful. I hope it's helpful. Any other questions? Any other questions I can answer? Yes. Mm -hmm. Codependency. So codependency is really where people feel like they need each other and they're not able to function without one another. So they're dependent on one another in an unhealthy manner. Like we need supports, right? But we should feel like we're whole people without having a certain relationship. You need, you feel like you need them to be happy and to, to yes, yep. Say it one more time. Love bombing. So love bombing is sometimes what happens where people sometimes when they start a relationship give a lot of affection, a lot of attention just to kind of get that person's trust and eventually they may set them up for potential harm, right? Because they're starting to go too far in in the very beginning, right? And they're doing it to kind of, again, maybe groom them for potential harm. A good question. How is it different from showing affection? I think really, 
it's really the end result of it because we may really be enamored, like we might really like a person that we're dating initially, but if we're doing it for the sole purpose to get that person's trust to eventually set them up for potential harm, then that can be a problem. I hope that answers. Any more questions? Well, I thank you all for your time and thank you so much for having me.